Okay, what is up tycoons? What's up traders? In today's video, I'm going to give you guys an update on ticker symbol ARR, okay, Armor Residential REIT. This was a viewer request. I do these viewer requests every single week, so if you want to see your stock, your token, your bond, whatever it is in the next video, all you have to do is comment down below and I'll make a video on it as soon as I can. So we're going to start off, uh, we're going to take a look at the daily chart right here. Uh, we're going to look at our momentum indicator, our MACD, as well as our relative strength index for any clues on what could be possibly happening. And then we'll break down really the key levels and some of the price action that we've been having, um, you know, on this stock right now. Now, it's been going on a very, very nice rally. You see, we hit lows of 4.38 and we're all the way back up to 6.21 currently. So it's definitely had an impressive rally. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of an ascending triangle right now, which... Um, Typically, this is a continuation pattern and a bullish pattern. Um, but if you take a look at what the stock has done previously, right, uh, as far as a continuation pattern, we weren't in a bullish cycle before this, right? We did have a bearish, uh, you know, rundown, right? A bearish collapse over here. And so, um, you know, it just makes this pattern a little bit weaker, okay? Now, we've done a good job of testing that level and finally breaking through, right? We tested it over here, over here. We tested it a few times over here, but really couldn't get a good breakout. And this past Friday, we actually did get a strong breakout, right? We opened at that level and then we were able to close above it. So, um, you know, there is a good chance that we could be seeing a breakout and heading up into our overhead supply zone, which is going to be um, in between here. It's going to be right about, what is this level? 6.61 down to 6.42. All right. Uh, as you can see over here, you know, this was a consolidation range over here. Um, and, you know, I'm actually dropping a good supply and demand video here shortly uh, tutorial. But this is what you look for, right? You're looking for uh, less than 10 candles consolidating uh, in a tight range, okay, before you get the next big move. And so, you know, this is going to be an area that really consolidated and we sold a sharp sell off. We saw a sharp sell off afterwards. So we need to break through this range. If we are able to break through this range, our bullish price targets are essentially just going to be $7 and $7 and 50 cents. Um, you know, that's where I think this thing could go if it continues running very hard. Um, but you have to keep in mind what's going on with the real estate sector, right? And so, you know, um, real estate as a whole doesn't have a good outlook for 2023. And perhaps that's why we saw, you know, this big sharp sell off, right? So a lot of that was pricing in. And maybe now we're just retracing. So if we actually take out our Fibonacci retracement tool um, and do this and connect our most recent high, like our previous high, and then we come down here connected to our low, you can see that it also matches up with this supply zone that we have right here, okay? Um, now, the reason we use the Fib tool is because nothing really moves in a straight line up, okay, or in a straight line down. You get a move up, retracement, continuation of that trend, or a move down, retracement, continuation of that trend. Um, you can use this to also spot reversals rather than just trend continuation. So if you move down, you consolidate a little bit, and then you break through that retracement level, um, then you know you could be potentially spotting a reversal, right? So on the larger scale, you see we had the move down, we've retraced, we've been consolidating a little, and we could potentially get a breakout past our major retracement level, which is going to be that supply zone that I just gave you guys earlier as well. Um, and you know, if that happens, then possibly we could hit our bullish price targets up above of seven and seven fifty. But if we zoom in a little bit more, we also have our retracement support levels on here. Okay. So that's what we're going to look at right now real quick. And what we're doing is we're taking our swing low up here to our swing high. And it's given us three levels uh, to really pay attention to and look out for, right? And those are going to be 553, 531, and 509, all right? Um, the reason being is, again, <clears throat> you know, nothing's going to move in a straight line up or down. So we've had this move up. If we do pull back, okay, we want to hold these three levels. These three levels are going to be very important to deciding whether we bounce off of here and continue up higher, continue that short-term trend, and we're able to break through the long-term trend, right? Because in the in the longer term, we're in a big downtrend, we're retracing up. But if we, um, you know, if we get rejected somewhere around here and we end up uh, going backwards, 
essentially what we're going to be looking for is to hold these three levels of support down here. So, um, you know, it's 553, 531 and 509. Now let's go ahead and use some of our indicators over here and see what we have. Um, you know, we have a little bit of a bearish divergence on the uh, momentum indicator as well. So we'll go ahead and draw that on here real quick. But as you can see, you know, we started off with highs over here, but we've gone higher. We've made new highs and the momentum indicator has making lower highs. So that's what's known as the divergence. Whenever you look at your MACD, your RSI, different things like that, and you're seeing these, um, you know, those are those are those are uh, divergences okay in this case a bearish divergence now if you take a look the momentum indicator also just crossed below its momentum sma um that's one of the first steps that you look at for a sell-off or a possible reversal so we're going to pay close attention to our macd which also has a bearish divergence and just so you guys can visualize what these divergences are right it's a high and then a higher high but here we have a high and a lower high so, you know, these should these should be mirroring the price action and should be going up higher, but they're not. So we already got a bearish crossover right here on the momentum indicator. Uh, it could cross back above and that would be a sign of, you know, basically us continuing this rally. Now, we need to be cautious of the MACD is very close to doing a, a bearish crossover. So if you see this cross down below um, on your MACD, OK, then that it could be another sign of the sell off. Right. And that we're about to get a sell off. Now, these bearish divergence trend lines, we want to break through these if you're bullish, right? So essentially, if we break through these, retest and continue to go up higher, then most likely, you know, we're going to see this uh, stock do the same thing and break out, get a slight pullback and continue higher. All right. Um, you know, we're already starting to break out past this, this line right here. Uh, which is what we want to do, uh, you know, for this chart pattern breakout to take us up here. Um, so, you know, keep a close eye on the MACD. All right. And as well as on our relative strength index, we have a bearish divergence. We're testing the trend line again right now, uh, currently. And so, like I said, you know, you want to see us break out past this trend line um, and, you know, head upwards. But when it comes to, you know, a few of the indicators that I use, you know, we have the relative strength index with uh, bearish divergence, the MACD with bearish divergence and the momentum SMA uh, indicator with bearish divergence, um, you know, and we take into the fact that this is a continuation pattern, typically this ascending triangle and that we're coming from a bearish, um, you know, bearish cycle in the past that we need to be a little bit cautious of this breakout here. There's a huge earnings season approaching. All right. And especially this week, in fact, um, but, you know, the whole month of February is going to be a huge roller coaster ride. Uh, the FOMC speech is going to have a huge impact on the real estate stocks uh, because those are highly affected by, you know, the actual interest rates uh, that Powell is putting into effect. So, you know, we could see a big shakeup right after this big, big rally. We could see everything try to reverse. All right. We're already starting to get a couple bearish signals in these things. Um, but, you know, for now, these are going to be the major support levels that you need to hold. Um, now, <clears throat> the way you use the FIB is if we make new highs, you have to connect the high to the new high, right? So if we come up to here, notice how it's going to bring our major support levels up higher, right? So if we pull up some more, we go up to like 650, 656, and you're going to have to adjust your FIB retracement levels, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you know, as you're trying to uh, chart up some of the major support levels. But for now, based off of our most recent high, these are going to be the three major retracement levels. Uh, if you take a look at our DMI down here, which um, the way I have this color coordinated basically just shows you who's in control. Uh, green is going to be the buyers. Um, red is obviously going to be the sellers. And then this blue is kind of like the average right here. If you look, Okay, sellers just completely lost control, right? Um, so there, you know, the average is now above it. It crossed over below the average and buyers are still in full control right now. And notice that, you know, since buyers really took control, we've really been consolidating in this range and haven't really got much of a push higher except here recently. So, you know, buyers took control here. That's when we made this new high and we've been pulling back and consolidating and really just testing this level up here. Eventually, we did get this breakout. So we want to see buyers stay in control. We don't want to see this head towards in a downwards direction and start to see these curl back up. That's going to be, um, you know, just some more bearish signs to be aware of. Uh, but for now, you know, this does look strong. Everything's been looking strong, um, you know, and this this month of February is basically going to show everybody, hey, was this a fake out? And was all of this just another bear market rally? Or 
are we about to continue this, you know, massive move to the upside that a lot of stocks, a lot of crypto has been doing? And if so, um, you know, then we could be getting the catalyst that we need, right? If if Powell gives, comes out and gives a dovish speech, right? If he gives a dovish speech, the market's probably going to go bullish. If earnings continues to come out less than, you know, expected or or i'm sorry better than expected right because a lot of people were anticipating really bad earnings we've got amazon apple microsoft no microsoft already did there we got amazon apple we got google and we have meta okay facebook doing earnings this week so big week um starting off february and i think february is going to be a really big month overall because after we have all of these earnings and the fomc report we're going to end up getting the next round of inflation data cpi ppi uh, PMI, things like that. So stay tuned. Um, you know, put your seatbelt on because February is going to be a roller coaster and you want to be prepared for the upside or the downside, right? So we covered some of the downside targets. We covered some of the upside targets. And now you just have to pay attention to the price action and really see where it's going to go from here.